Um, in, the, in the questionnaire, all the candidates indicated their desire to realign schools to meet uh, the needs of 21st century jobs. Uh, yet, all the skills needed to, um, to create those sort of jobs, creativity, ability to think on your feet, the ability to think critically, uh, problem solve, are all stifled by some of the policies um, that are most popular um, uh, among legislators sort of moving forward. Um, how do you plan to foster the skills of the future while, um, you know, while, there, the, um, the, while there's a push for increased um, standardized testing and charter schools that focus on zero tolerance, more seat time, and cutting of extracurriculars? Yeah, it's a worrisome issue. Uh, I'm, I've got a personal stake, I'll confess. My brother's a 40-year school teacher, now retired. He's younger than me the bone, but he retired. But he did teach for 40 years. And my daughter, uh, my, my, my youngest child, is a school teacher. And so I, I hear about this, I think about it all the time. And I'm a pediatrician, and, and I've taught myself. Um, we, we're making some mistakes here. I'm, we need standards, of course. In fact, we should be aiming for world-class education right across the board. And we need, we, we, we need measure, measurement. You have to have some way to measure. But when you get into metrics and standards is the only way to do things, you're in Taylorism. We're talking about that's mass production from the turn of this century, last century. Today we, we understand something different, which is greatness happens when a workforce is supported to be proud and joyous in what they do. And that is the answer. So let's have time for, let's have smart, but let's keep our eye on the ball. Teachers are not the problem, they're the solution. And when you're an executive that understands excellence, you get the workforce together, you ask them for their ideas, you enable them to learn, you help them grow, and that breeds success. We've seen it here. There's a wonderful story, which I, I really want to study in detail, but I've, I've been interviewed the people in Lowell. Um, you know, Lowell's a struggling community. It's doing better now, but it has some schools that are not doing well. Well, the, the, the head of the union there, Paul Georges, the teacher's union, and the, and the superintendent, Chris Georges, they decided enough of this nonsense teaching to the test and all this metric, why don't we just help each other and grow and develop? Fitchburg State helped add new educational opportunities for the teachers, they studied together on cooperation and growth. They took the Merklin School, an elementary school, from level four, failing school, to level one in 18 months. And they did it not by blaming anybody, they worked together. That's my, that's my approach to leadership. It's, it's mobilizing the workforce. When I took over Medicare and Medicaid, I had an all-staff meeting, all 5,500 people. We got together virtually in 2000 in a room. I, I, I recited the mission statement, will be a major force for improvement. I laid out the values I wanted to operate by, boundarylessness, speed and agility, uh, uh, unconditional teamwork, innovation, customer focus. And I said, those will be our values. Now you get the job done. I'm here to help you all. Take the obstacles away. You're smarter than I am. Please do it. And we trained them. We trained 200 black belts. When you mobilize a workforce, you get a better result. And that's what we need to do in education today.